All right, yeah. so that's that's step mm -hmm. one here. Now, then the next thing, and this is maybe confusing because it's not entirely clear why, but you actually never want this second number to be a decimal. Okay, so we we need to we need to change uh, this number to a whole number. Now, have you seen division with a fraction bar before, like this? Um, I'm pretty sure. You have you have seen something like this before? Uh huh. Okay, now this that's good because one of the things you're allowed to do with a fraction is you're allowed to do something to the top and the bottom. You're you're allowed to, for mm -hmm. example, multiply the top and the bottom by ten, and what that does is it moves the decimal. It moves the decimal to the right in both cases. Do you see that when it multiply by ten, it moves the decimal to the right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, what that does is it is it changes your division problem now to a whole number on the outside, and that's exactly what you want here. So we change the problem from 1.71 divided by 0 0.9 to 17.1 divided by 9, and that's what you want. You want a whole number outside the house when you're doing the division. Mm -hmm. Okay. The... Uh, the, the next step here, do you remember how to do long division? Um, yes. Okay. So you start by asking yourself, how many times does nine go into 17? One. One time. And then you multiply the numbers, one times nine, and put the result down below, and then you subtract. And then you drop the one. One down. Very good. Yeah. So now how many times does nine go into 81? Nine. Nine times. But your answer is not 19. You actually it's, have to move. It's 1.9. Yeah, exactly. You have to move that decimal up right there, 1.9. So your answer is, is 1.9. Sorry about that. Put that back. Your answer is 1.9. Very good. OK, so let's look at uh, problem number two. Mm -hmm. Problem number two here. So it's, the, so it's the same issue. It's like, hey, you got to do the same division. 2.64 divided by 0 0.6. Put the 0 0.6 on the bottom and the 2.64 on the top and then multiply by 10. Yeah, exactly. Because you see here, there's a problem. You, you, you need a whole number. So 2.64 is on top, like you said. You multiply them both by 10. So that changes your your answer. Now that what they try to show you is that you can actually do it over here on the left. Like you can you can just move the decimal, um, which is fine eventually. But this is the new new problem. Mm -hmm. okay. It's. Wait, do you want me to divide it? Uh, sure, if you're comfortable. Yeah. Okay. It's 4.4. .4. Yeah, and it works out perfectly, doesn't that? All right. Um, yeah, let's let's look at uh, example number three because this one's just a tiny bit different. So it says it says find or determine fifty two divided by zero point four. You have that same problem as you had um, in the previous problem. You have to multiply both of them by ten because the second number really should be a whole number. Yeah. It's just so much easier when it's a whole number here. So you multiply yeah, top and bottom by 10, and that's 520 divided by, by 4. And that's something you did probably in your class last year, or maybe the year before. Yeah. Do you want me to do it? Yeah, why don't you try doing that one? That would be great. Okay. Uh, okay, so 
And minus, so it's 13 for the first number. Well, it, it's really one, right? One goes into five, and yeah. then you bring that down. And oh, then yeah, I was being stupid enough to just do no, the no, whole thing. Don't say that. It, it, you're, you're trying to, you're, you're trying your best to get the answer, but you got to do it the same way each time. Yeah, isn't it, is, but is it 1,300? Yes, yes. Okay, and then three times four is 12. And you bring that zero down, how many times does four go into zero? Zero times. Yeah, one through. <clears throat> Perfect, okay. So now a couple other variations on this. We'll look at number example number four next. So sometimes you have to multiply by a number bigger than 10. Okay, the goal the goal though is to get that second number that second number into a whole number. You don't care about the first one. The first one can be as many decimal places as you want. But the second number if you multiply by 10 it becomes 1.8. And so you have to multiply it by 10 again to get so just 100. So you might as well multiply it by 100, but it's always the same. It's always whatever Whatever you do to the bottom, you'd have to do to the top. Now just be nine. Nine on top, yeah. Now this one's a little different. Um, maybe you already know the answer, but let's work it out here the correct way. Okay, does 18 go into nine? Um, yes. No, it doesn't not. It does not. Zero Nine times. Goes it goes into 18. Yeah, it goes in zero times. Okay. So, well, what do we do? Well, there's actually, it's actually 9.0 here. Okay? Yeah. And then you ask yourself, well, how many times does 18 go into 90? And that's where you might need a calculator. You said you aren't allowed to use one. So you make a guess, like 18 times. What do you think is a reasonable guess here? Um, you could do four. No, four. yeah, no, five. Okay. Five. Yes, yeah, so you probably already kind of said, oh, uh, four won't work, but uh, four ends up being 72 and five ends up being 90. So the answer is 0 0.5. Wait, but if you multiply 18 by five, don't you get 82? You get 90. Nope, 18 times five is 90 uh, because because you're you're taking 10 and multiplying it by five plus eight and multiplying by five. 50 plus 40 gets you to back to 90. Mm -hmm. Oh. Oh, wait. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I'm just, I didn't do it right. I just thought of doing eight times, five times, ten times, it's fifty. Oh, wait. Yeah. Wait. Oh, what? Wait, isn't five times eight? It's 40. Oh, yeah. yeah. I forgot. Okay. Now, now, the reason I said maybe up here on the top, right, I said, well, maybe you already know the answer is because nine is exactly half of 18 half is 0 0.5 but you're still supposed to do it the way we've we've been doing it here mm -hmm. okay so let's take a look at example five this is basically just dividing decimals yep so How 11 can it be that easy well when you know the right approach it's most things are not too difficult. Anything complicated. Yeah, so then for that one, you just multiply it by 10. 10 gets you to 100, 100. 100, yeah. So you actually count the number of decimal places. Now, up top, you end up getting an even bigger number. Okay, so that seven goes outside the house. One, one, two, zero goes inside the house. 
Go ahead and give this one a try, please. Okay. Um, one. Wait, so eleven goes in one time. That's right. And then minus, you get four. Drop yep. the two. So it's forty-two. Good. One, eleven. And then. Five. Yeah. Um, is it one hundred and uh seventeen? You say you say one hundred and seventeen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it, you subtract and get four and bring the two down, yeah. so you get. Seven goes into 42, those six times. Six times seven is 42. Do you see that? Yeah. Okay, because you have 117. Not, not sure how that second one came from. Um, but you subtract. Oh, no, so, well, I kind of like um, what I did. Yeah, I dropped the four. Wait, wait, how did I do that? Wait, no, wait, yeah, no, I was, no, oh, no, I, that's why I got it wrong. Okay. Yeah, uh, I was doing it kind of mental. Like, I was trying to do it on, I'll, I'll do it on paper now. Yeah, hopefully you're working these out on paper. Just watching me do it will not help you. Yeah, I know, I should have. Yeah, yeah, I totally messed up. You are in grade six again? Yeah. Okay. So let's have you try, let's do a couple more of these. Um, Wait, what the? That's okay. Don't don't focus too much on this one. The, the best thing to do is for us to work on another problem, and see uh, see what you come up with. Okay, so let me uh, let me have you try this one. Unless you have other problems you want us to work on, but this would be a good one for us to do next. Actually, I take that back. This one's not, this one's a little bit out of scope for what you're doing. Uh, let me do, let me do, let me grab this one. Actually, I take that back. Here, let me, let me just write it out. Okay, Mason. So we're going to do 0 0.0096 divided by 0.8. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, just like the last problem that we did, you have an issue here. The, the fraction has a decimal on the bottom. So what should you multiply the, the top and bottom by? What should you multiply both numbers by? A thousand. Thousand's too much. The, only the bottom number needs to be a whole number. I'm sorry? Hundred. Only the bottom number needs to become a whole number. Oh, uh, 10. 10. So you multiply them both by 10. Now you can similarly just move the decimal to the right each time. Okay. But you get the same result. You get 0 0.096 over 8 because you're moving that decimal over to the right. You get the same thing over here on the left. 0 0.096 divided by 8. 8 goes on the outside. 0 0.096 goes on the, the inside here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so your decimal always goes in that same position there. 
Does eight go into zero? Um, no. Zero times, right? Does it go into nine? Yes. How many times does it go into nine? Once. One time. So then you multiply and subtract. One. One, bring the six down. Two. Two, very good. Okay, so here's a problem for you to try. Actually, I'll write it out again. It's gonna be a little, a little better here. Let's go 30.03 divided by 0 0. 0.03. I'd like you to try okay. working this one out this one out on your on your own, please. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm getting this right, but it's the first like thing, uh, 303 over three, if you multiply it by a hundred. Okay, so when you multiply by 100, you move the decimal how many places to the right? Two. Two, so one and then two. And you have to do the same thing up here, one and then two. So you're, you're moving it. You're moving that decimal. Yeah, I got it. So to me, it's 3,003 divided by three. Mm -hmm. is, that, is that what you meant? I heard something yeah. slightly different. Okay, so go ahead and give that a try, please. Okay, it's one thousand and one. I agree, it's one thousand one. Very good. Okay, let's try another one here. Well, one thousand. Uh, no, 10.0. No, no. So, so Mason, the, the, uh, there's no decimal. Well, the decimal is over here to the right. Oh, wait. So that decimal comes up. Wait, yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Are you ready for, uh, you ready for another one? Uh -huh. Yes, the answer is yes. <laughs> All right, so let's go 17.28 divided by 0.6. I'm thinking it. Oh, wait, what? Oh, okay. So go ahead and give this problem a try, please, Mason. Yeah, I will. I just had to switch pages. Hold up. Um. Okay. Um, I'm going to do it. Let me know when you have an answer, please. Wait, do we need to multiply it? Uh, yes. Yes. Just like the previous problems, the second number, second number has to become a whole number. Okay. Um,
fifth two prop and zero point zero prop. Forty a a How are you doing on this one? Um, okay, I got it. Okay, what's your answer? 20.86. Like this? Yeah. Okay, so it becomes six on the outside of the house, 172.8 on the inside of the house. Is that oh, what you have? Oh, it's because I multiplied it by 100. Right. You look at that number on the bottom and you figure out what you multiply by. Yeah. I'm, oh, I multiplied it by 100. Okay. Whoopsies. It's okay. Do you want to retry it from here? I want 2.1 in math. Well, it's going to improve. You keep keep working on these lessons. If you watch the videos, I, I hear a math student that's capable of doing better than you're doing right now. I hope. Do you want to rework it from here? Um. Yes, yeah, sure. Well. I just have to reduce it, Te my answer technically. The, the answer has some of the right digits, but not all of them. So I really would recommend reworking it from here. How many times does six go into one? No, it does not go into one. Does it go into 17 though? It does go in two, two times, times, right? And then you yep. subtract and bring the two down. Now does six go into 52? Yes. Yep. How many times? Um, eight. Eight times, okay. Eight times six is? Oh, yeah, technically, yeah, I got it wrong. Uh, eight times six is 48. 48, good. And then you subtract, bring the, Four. and then bring the eight down. Eight. How many times does six go into 48? Eight. Eight times, there's your answer. So all I have to do is take away that zero. Well, no, I mean you're you're you had some of the right oh, digits, but no, there's something wrote something wrote significantly wrong. wrong. So let's so no big no. deal here. You were you wrote uh the answer that I put was uh twenty point eighty eight. Okay. If 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 that's true, I just I, I always confirm. So if that's true, yeah, you you just missed one of the digits there. Yeah, I didn't see that. Okay, let's try another one here. Let's go three point zero zero eight divided by point zero four. Point zero four. Okay. So I want you to tell me what you're going to multiply each of these numbers by, or which one hundred. Okay, and how many places do you move the decimal? Two two places perfect okay so this becomes because you're moving it right two times right two times four on the outside and what number goes on the inside um three three hundred and point eight good so see if you can work this out from here please okay
two drop is zero one. One Is it seventy five point two? It is. That's perfect. Very good. All right. So we um, we did. Uh, the only thing we didn't do was this first sheet of your um, of your. Uh, I don't know what to call it here, but it's maybe not an assignment, but it, it kind of already has the answers and it's just asking for the pattern. So you'll have oh, to. Oh, yeah, that, have, that's just like a warm up sheet, I think. Yeah, that, that's something. I mean, you can, you can just see the pattern it goes up, goes up by by 10 each time. All right. Well, that is it for us for tonight, Mason. Great job. Thanks for letting me help you. And I'll see you on, see you or I'll see your brother on uh, on Thursday. I hope you have a great okay. couple of days. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye now. Okay. Bye.